Hello, everyone. Um, whew, I'm so excited to be here. Very excited to be hosting today's Quantum Alignment Show um, and excited to get to share this amazing experience with all of you today. And before I get started, I just want to also just express my gratitude uh, to Karen for creating such an amazing platform and community um, of amazing people here. So what we're gonna talk about today, as you can see from the title slide is, you know, making your fears your superpower. And I think we all can relate to experiencing fear in our lives. And some of us may experience it daily, right? As it pertains to um, your business. You know, I am a business coach. I'll get to that into a, in a moment, but a lot of us experience fear that comes up around our business. And fear is natural, right? It's natural, it's powerful, and it's a primitive human emotion. And the way I like to look at fear, I like to look at it in a positive light, right? Because a lot of the times I think fear gets a bad rap, that it's a negative thing, but it's actually here to support us. It's actually here to help to address that, to let, let us know of any presence of danger, whether that be physical danger or a psychological danger. And so fear is definitely a universal feeling. So for today's presentation, I want to help you look at how fear may be holding you back from trusting yourself and how you can take the steps necessary to move through the fear, to move with the fear and allow fear to be your ally instead of something that holds you back and uh, causes you to shrink your potential. So my intention today is to provide you with a new way of looking at fear, to provide you with some insights that will help you in your relationship with fear, right? And putting you in the driver's seat instead of allowing fear to be in the driver's seat. And through this insight and through this perspective, you'll see how your fears can actually again, be your superpower. You can begin to work with them and work with the fear instead of working against it, which just creates more uh, resistance. So I am Kendra Woods and I am a level two, uh -oh. I am a level two human design specialist and I'm a human design business alignment coach and the founder of Soulful Success by Design, where I help coaches, leaders, and healers and service providers create alignment in business and life through what I sometimes will call your divine design. So human design found me in 2018. Um, I was invited actually to learn more about this amazing system. I have a really good friend of mine who kept saying to me, have you heard about human design? You should look into it. You should go see what your type is. Have you heard about it? And after the third time, I was like, Okay, let me go look at it because clearly there's something there that I need to see. And so when I started going down the, the human design rabbit hole, like we all tend to do, I begin to learn more about what it means for me to be a projector. So I'm a 6'2 splenic projector. And when I begin to learn all the different um, you know, aspects of what it means to be a projector, I literally had moments where I just cried, right? Because I felt so seen and understood and validated. And a lot of the things that happened in my past when I was in the corporate world made sense to me, right? Like I had jumped around from restaurant management to real estate to healthcare um, as a healthcare executive, did all the things and I just kept burning out. And so it really helped me make sense of all of that. And human design has allowed me to just embody the, you know, my authentic self, my authentic design, and gives me permission to just show up simply as me in a more unapologetic way. So I get to kind of flow through life in a more relaxed manner. And it also helped me understand why I had so many trying moments with my parents growing up, right? Like my father's a generator and my mother is a manifesting generator. And now I get all the different things that used to get on my nerves or how I would get on their nerves with things. Totally got it. <laughs> so let's talk about what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover human design and fear. So we're going to, I'm going to help you learn the history of fear and how it pertains to you today. And you'll understand where the frequency of fear lives in the human design chart. And you'll also learn about that, what the highest expression of each fear frequency means, because we get to choose how we will interact with fear. The next thing I'll show you is the four stages of fear. 
So understanding the progression of fear in the body. Um, I'm a big believer, and I don't know if you relate to this, but if I understand how something works, I can then better lead myself through it when I'm experiencing it myself. And then the last piece we'll look at is how to dismantle your fear. So I'm going to share with you three simple uh, steps to escape and overcome the debilitating fear loop that you may find yourself in sometimes. All right, so fear in the human design chart. You all can see that. All right, fear in the human design chart is found in the spleen. We're gonna talk about the, the splenic center today. Now, the spleen is not just the center where you have this fear, you know, instinctive fear um, energy. It's also the place where for intuition, for time, um, your lymph nodes, and also your immune system. But for today's focus, we'll be focusing on the, the theme of, of fear as it presents itself in the splenic center. So your spleen is an awareness center and the fe fear is the seed of this awareness. It's what brings you to the alert to realize that, okay, something's not right. And it's very much so a body focused awareness, right? And it's the seat of your primal instinct. And it's also the place, again, where your intuition, you know, resides and it lets you know something's good for you, for your survival or bad for you. And when we think about fear, we have this wired into our, into our bodies, right? It's this primal instinct. Now, back in the day, thousands and thousands of years ago, of course, we needed this primal instinct to make sure that, you know, we could survive, that we weren't going to be eaten by, you know, a lion or something. Today, it's more of a, we don't really have that threat, so to speak. So our threats today are more, can be a lot of psychological, you know, threats that we may face. You know, as it pertains to business, it can be this fear of, of doing a Facebook Live or a fear of doing a presentation like this and speaking in front of people. It could be a fear of, you know, really showing up big in your business and talking about how it is that you can help people with what it is that you do. Right, so that can create a fear in you that can feel very much like it's life or death to your body. Um, it's also the place for health and well-being. And as we move through this presentation, I'm going to share with you the seven predominant fears in the spleen that you can either work with for your evolution, or you can resist it. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of all of this. If you have your human design chart or you're familiar with your particular design, your spleen center is either going to be undefined or defined. And I want to break down these two for a moment so that you can understand how you will experience the energy in this particular center. So if you have an undefined spleen, um, you may have some gates that are active, like this particular little um, design that I did doesn't have any gates active, but you may have some of these gates active. And, but, this, the, the, but the center is white, it's not colored in. So for you, your survival instinct is inconsistent, right? Sometimes it's sharp and sometimes you miss the mark. So it's not something that you can rely on consistently throughout your life. You'll experience the fear frequency in an amplified way. So when you have, uh, this really applies to any undefined center, but specifically your spleen, when your spleen is undefined, you're receiving fear energy from the world around you, from your environment, from people that you're with, um, from the world. I mean, if you have an undefined spleen right now with what, with all that's happened in the world over the past year and a half, you're receiving a lot of fear inside of your body and maybe amplifying that. Okay. So with it, your spleen being undefined, you can be deeply conditioned and influenced by the fear of others. Right? You can be deeply influenced by the fear of the collective, so to speak. But your gift is to gather wisdom as it pertains to fear. And so as we walk through the higher expression of what it means to, to, to vibrate at the higher expression of this particular um, center, that is where you can really gather the wisdom to help other people, not only yourself, but other people as well. You're also very sensitive to the scary things happening in the world, like I mentioned before. But your work is about working on becoming clear as to what fears are yours and what you've picked up from someone else. And I have a defined spleen, but, I, but that piece right there has actually helped me a lot in my life to determine, okay, wait a minute, let me 
clear myself out of this space that I'm in and just really ask myself, is this mine or someone else's? Um, and now if you have a defined spleen, which is this um, uh, graphic here, you have a consistent, reliable survival instinct, right? The energy for you in this space is really consistent. And if you have splenic authority, then your instincts are going to be the driving force in your life. So I have splenic authority. And one of the ways that, one of the things that I had to do in, in my journey is to really separate my mind from my intuition because the mind is loud, right? And it can definitely overpower the, the whispers and the, the nudges that you receive from your intuition. So free yourself, if you're a defined spleen person, free yourself from needing to explain your intuitive hunches because a lot of the times they may not make sense at all, right? They'll defy logic. And your mind's gonna to wanna to chime in and say, well, that doesn't make any sense because the mind is always looking for an answer, looking for a why, looking for the how. But for you, it's about trusting and just simply knowing. And you will also, you'll experience the frequency of fear in a more um, consistent manner as well. So if you're a defined spleen, you're broadcasting. So one of the things that I feel is our responsibility as those who have a defined splenic center is to really work through our fears so that we are not inadvertently broadcasting our fears out to others, right? All right. So I want to help you to shift your mindset about fear because it's not a scary thing. Our body, to our body, it feels scary, but it's not a scary thing. And this is a little acronym that I created for myself to just remind me in those moments when I'm feeling the fear to shift into, you know, faith, expectancy, action, and resilience. And I want to explain to you what this means. And so maybe you can use this as a tool for yourself when you find yourself being wrapped up in fear. So the faith aspect is choosing faith, choosing faith, even when things don't look like they're working, right? Even when it feels like, you know, all things are falling apart or even when it feels like, you know, what if this happens or what if that happens? You as a conscious being get to choose to remain faithful in that moment and choose to believe that things are working out regardless of what it looks like in front of you, which leads me to expectancy. And this is about, again, choosing a mindset of expectancy that things always work out for you and looking for what you want instead of what you don't want. And to be honest, like that was a real game changer for me to really shift my focus around to really be to focus on what I want to see happening versus allowing my mind to just go off and do its thing, focusing on what I, what I don't want. So notice in those moments when you're focused on the don't wants, and choosing that moment to instead focus on what do I do want? What do I want to happen, right? What do I want to, to receive or achieve? And then the next step is action. Choosing to take action even when you're feeling um, afraid, right? Knowing that by doing so, you're causing the fear to actually disappear. Now, if we kept this really simple and really elementary, like this one um, step here, is how you move through fear is taking the action, right? Because as soon as you take the action, as soon as you do the thing that you think is threatening to you, the fear disappears, right? Now, while that may be, you know, very simple, I understand too that it's not easy, right? Because there's some deconditioning that gets to happen. There's some awarenesses that have to be uh, increased, right? But at the end of the day, it's, it's taking the action. And then the last piece of this is resilience. So choosing to tap into your, your reserve of resilience because you are a resilient being, knowing that you've got this and that you can handle it. And maybe reflecting back on past times where you encountered a difficult situation where fear was involved and you still made it through. And you made it through stronger and wiser um, than you were before. So tapping into that reserve of resiliency. <clears throat> so let's talk about raising your vibration. So now I'm going to take you through the different, um, I'm going to take you through the different fear frequencies that are in the spleen, what it looks like in the low expression and how you can move into the higher expression um, of this, uh, of the, of the fear energy. So pay attention to if you have these particular gates activated, 
on your human design chart, because these are going to be, if they're activated for you on your chart, if they're defined, if these gates are defined, then this is, you're going to have, um, you, this is the frequency or the flavor of the energy that you're going to experience. So number one, um, well, let me, hold on, I'm going to step back for a second. I also want to say this, we can choose to, again, go to the low vibe expression of the high vibe. The shadow side of any fear, when we look at the low vibe of the expression, is either repressive or reactive. So part of increasing your awareness around this particular center in your, in your human design is getting clear on, am I repressing my fear or, or am I being reactive, right? Am I trying to push it down and pretend like it's not there or am I just reacting all the time? And so my goal today is to help you to begin to operate and a higher vibe expression of fear because you are a conscious chooser, right? And if you look at the law of consciousness, one of the laws of consciousness says that, you know, you're only subject to fear if you consciously say that it applies to you. And that's something that I like to remind myself of, right? Is, okay, well, am I choosing to allow this to apply to me? Am I choosing to allow this to be the say of how I show up? And we are only subject to negative thoughts or belief if we consciously say that it applies to us, all right? So you are free to choose not to buy into the fear and the negative belief that's created by fear. And you're free to choose not to, to buy into the negative belief system that can be created, right? Now, I know a lot of this, uh, if you're undefined, you may have some conditioning that maybe is not yours. It came from parents or siblings or you know, society. But now at this stage, it's like we're all adults and we get to consciously choose to, to experience this at a higher level. So let's talk about the gates. So the first gate is gate 48, which is the fear of inadequacy. That's its low expression. And so if you have this, this fear gate active or defined, which is one of my um, fear gates, then you're afraid that you'll never know enough and that you'll always be inadequate. And so what this could look like is you over-preparing and feeling like you need to get the next certification and the next certification and the next degree and the next thing. Um, and it's just this continuous self-fulfilling, you know, prophecy where you feel like you don't know enough, so I got to know more. I don't know enough, so I got to know more. And you just keep doing that. When in reality, you know so much more than you even realize. And if you take what you know now you can help so many people just by choosing to trust, right? And so that's where we go into the high vibe expression of this. And so when I look at the high vibe expression of any gates in human design, I do refer to um, gene keys, right? I look at the gene keys because I like to see what's the shadow, what's the gift, and then what is the, what, what is called the CD level. And so I'm gonna be sharing with you what the gift is as it pertains to um, gene keys. So gate 48 is about resourcefulness on the high expression. And so when you choose to let go of the resistance of not knowing and you choose to trust you're not knowing, life resolves itself in an effortless way. And you're gonna hear me say the word trust so much throughout this presentation because it is the foundation for how you move through your fears and through how you can uh, allow your fears to be your superpower is to trust. So trust that you're gonna know what you need to know when you need to know it. And it's also about preparing yourself. So if you're a person that has a fear of inadequacy and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know enough. I think I need to go take this course before I can do this in my business. You can work through this by preparing yourself, but then you've got to choose to understand that, okay, I'm preparing myself and you've got to get clear on when enough is enough. All right, I have enough. Let me go take some imperfect action and do my thing, right? Um, gate 57 is the fear of the future, right? So you're afraid of what the future will bring until you hold back, right? You're, you're thinking about, you're in your mind, you're thinking of all the things that could happen um, in, in the future. And because that keeps replaying in your mind over and over and over again, you instinctively kind of hold yourself back and play small because you're like, mm, what if this happens? What if that happens? But if you have this as a defined gate in your chart, right? The high expression of this is intuition. You are so very, you know, you're very much intuitive, right? So you can choose to trust your own insights and, and trust your gut, right? Trust what you're feeling. And so what the way that you do this and how you can move through this is discerning between intuition and fear. Now, through my experience, for me, intuition feels 
very exciting. It feels expansive. It feels like, oh, heck yeah. It's like, okay, yep, yep. It's like a knowing. For me, it's like a knowing, right? It's like a knowing and a feeling. Fear feels very loud. It feels very bossy. It feels very um, uh, constrictive. And so when you increase your awareness around how this is showing up for you, you can recognize that, okay, this is fear that I'm feeling and you can choose to surrender it so that you can hear your intuition because fear can overpower the, the, the quiet whispers of your intuitive knowing, right? And so it does take some practice, but with practice, you definitely can begin to operate separate if you will, from fear to be able to see it as the observer and know that, okay, this is fear I'm feeling. Let me step back and tune into myself and to my body. Okay. All right, moving on. So gate 44, fear of the past. You're afraid that past events or past baggage will repeat itself in the present, right? Or in the future. So maybe you've had a bad experience in the past and you're carrying that with you and it's informing how you show up today. Right? So essentially, when we allow ourselves to stay in the low vibe of this expression, we're just recreating our past in the present moment. Right? So the high expression of this is around teamwork. And so I'll help you understand this in a moment. So teamwork. So making peace with the past, choosing to forgive. Right? Who do you need to forgive? Do you need to forgive yourself? Do you need to forgive somebody else? Um, what, is, what's some thing, what are some people or things that you need to forgive in your past? And it's through your awareness of past patterns that you can actually transform your pain into power so that you can live a fuller life. So instead of looking at the past and becoming depressed about all the things that happened in the past and why did this happen to me and this was horrible, you can pull yourself out of that and say, okay, but what did I learn? What did I learn from this? How did this make me stronger? How did this increase my resiliency? And then how can I then allow, take those nuggets of wisdom and live a fuller life, right? And if you um, operate in this at the highest expression, you're also great at reading people, right? And this is where the whole idea of, of uh, the high expression of teamwork comes in. You're great at reading people. And so you will know intuitively who the right people are for you, who are the right team members to add to your team, who are the right people that get to sit in the front row of your life, you know, and, and really have access to your life, right? You are great at reading um, and knowing the people who, whose communities you want to be a part of, right? Those are like the higher, the highest expression of this. And that's where, that's where the, the high expression term of teamwork comes in, right? All right, then the next one is your fear of responsibility. So you're afraid of taking responsibility, taking on responsibility, or taking on too much responsibility due to fear. So it's this idea, like for me personally, I experienced this in my life when, when I first started my business, I focused just on public speaking. I wanted to be a motivational speaker. I wanted to speak to audiences. I wanted to be at conferences and, and just share, you know, what I have a value to share. And I was so excited by that. But at the same time, I didn't play full out in that arena because I was afraid of failing my responsibility as a mother, right? It sounds so irrational as I think about it now, but my mind was like, yeah, but if I do this, then, you know, who's going to take care of my daughter? Who's going to watch her? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Right. Or what kind of mother would I be if I do this? And so I had this, this pull that was kind of holding me back. And it was a fear of just taking on more responsibility and trusting that I could handle it. So in the high vibe expression of this, it is choosing to bring balance and equilibrium to yourself and those around you by embracing honest principles and a deep alignment with peace. And so then what this looks like is you being really clear on your values, on your boundaries, um, and the principles that you live by, and really being unapologetic about those, but and, and aligning with them from a space of peace, right? No one else gets to dictate or determine what those values are for you or what those principles are for you. And so you can align with them from a space of peace, from a space of integrity. And so within that, it creates this equilibrium where you're able to take on the responsibilities that are required when you want to fulfill your dream, while also taking care of the other responsibilities that are, also, that are important to you as well. All right. And then you have gate 32, which is this fear of uh, a failure. Right, so the fear of failure holds you back, holds you back from what you truly want to do. 
And I think a lot of us can relate to this fear, whether you have it like defined or not, I think you can relate to this. Um, it's a fear of failure. It's a fear of doing the thing that you desire to do within because, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't work? What if I fail, right? What if they laugh at me <laughs> kind of thing? What if they think, what do people think I'm so silly for doing this? Um, and so it's this fear of failure. But on the high expression of this, when you can step into the high vibe of this, it's really about preservation. It's about knowing that, knowing what to keep alive, right? Choosing to raise your consciousness above fear so that you can see the long-term picture. And it's again about this balance of restraint and risk. Okay, what do I hold on to? So if you're thinking about business, for example, what is it in my business that, that I need to hold on to? And what risk do I need to take to help me you know, move myself forward and grow, right? So for you, the high vibe expression of this is, you know what needs to be let go or what you need to keep alive and what risks you need to take to help you get where you want to be. And you can be at peace with that. When you choose to operate in the high expression of this, you can, again, it's about trusting, right? It's really about trusting that I know what is best for me. I know what to preserve. I know what risks to take that are gonna help me. And then there's gate 28, which is about fear of death and purpose. And you're afraid in this particular energy, you're afraid that life has no purpose unless you take risks, right? So you think that, okay, well, I need to go out here and do all these big risky things because then that will help me to create purpose, right? Or that's, that's more of the reactive expression of it, right? The repressive expression is, you know, um, just really being nonchalant or just blase about life. Like, hmm, what's, the, what's the point? Why would I even try to do that, <laughs> you know? But when you step into the high vibe expression of this, it is about embracing totality, right? It's choosing to live in the moment, committed to facing the ups and the downs that life brings, trusting, there's that word again, trusting that as you do, your life unfolds exactly as it should, right? And it's about both, right? And this, we live in a world of, of duality. So you're gonna have the good with the bad, but it's being able to face both of them and knowing and trusting that as you move through them, life will unfold the way that it's meant to. And then the last gate uh, in this flame is gate 18, which is the fear of authority. So being afraid of being judged by others or turning it inward and really being judgmental and very critical of yourself. But when you choose to step into the higher expression of this, it's about integrity, right? is choosing to judge from your heart and integrity. Um, it's knowing when to offer correction, right? This is also like the gate of correction as well. So it's knowing when to offer correction, criticism and judgment in the right time from a place of love. So if you have this one defined, then this is one of those where, you know, you can't, you're gonna see something that needs correcting. You're gonna see something that needs to change. But the way that it will best be received is when someone comes to you and says, hey, can you take a look at this for me? Like, I, I have a question about this. What do you think? What are, you, what are your thoughts? Do you think that I need to make any corrections or changes? In that moment, then you get to offer your wisdom around correction. You get to offer your constructive criticism and judgments from a place of love because you intuitively know what it is that needs to happen. All right. So those are all of the fear gates. Um, let's see, I don't know if anyone has any questions. All right. Oh, we, we did have some questions that came in on Facebook. Okay, okay. Did you want to take questions or I want to make um, sure you have time to get through all your yeah, this is too. All right, so let me, we'll keep moving and then yes, I'll address questions at the end. Thank you. All right, so next, let's talk about the four stages of fear. I'm a big proponent that when, like I said earlier, when I understand how something works, I then understand how to move through it and how to work with it and lead myself through this. So there are four stages of fear. The first stage is imagination, right? We let ourselves get carried away by the exaggerated expectations of what we think could happen, right? And so most of the time what's happening is we're imagining scenarios worse than what they really are um, if we choose to move forward, right? We realize that, oh, that is not as bad. This is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 
Um, your mind is shuffling. What's happening in this moment, in this stage, is your mind is shuffling through all the possibilities that it may happen in order to prepare you to face them. Because remember, the, the fear energy in this plane is, is instinctual, right? So it's all about keeping you safe. It's all about survival. So your mind's flipping through all the possibilities in order to help prepare you to face them. But what's happening is as your mind is doing this, what's happening in your body, right? It's generating fear. It's generating anxiety. And so that takes you straight to the next step, which is fear. You're in full-blown fear. So fear itself um, arrives to the scene, right? Your body responds, your heart beats faster, uh, your breathing becomes shallow. You're filled with all kinds of nerves and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. And so when this happens, when, when fear takes over like this, you can't hear your intuition, right? Your thinking is not clear and you're not able to, to really move out of that space. And so then that takes you to the next stage of fear, which is either paralysis, or acceleration. And we've all heard of analysis paralysis, right? Like that's rooted in fear. And so in this stage, you can't think anymore, right? You're literally paralyzed by fear. And so when you're in paralysis mode, you're, you're focusing on, you, you begin to focus on uh, what you're feeling instead of paying attention to your thoughts, right? Nothing up here is making sense anymore. It's all in the body now because you're preparing, your body's preparing yourself to, to survive, to do what it needs to do or you step into acceleration, right? And acceleration is like just mindless activity. You're doing things that make no sense, but in the moment it feels like the right thing to do, right? Um, for, for example, it's, um, I don't know if this is a good example, but it's the one that's coming to my mind right now. You know, if you have kids in the car and you're driving and maybe someone pulls out in front of you and you hit the brakes and you put your arm in front of your kid, right? Like I, I do that even when my purse is in the front seat, so like I put my arm out. And it's just, it's a natural reaction that you're, you're reacting, right? You're accelerating your response. And it really, when you look back, you're like, well, what is that going to do, right? It's, it, if you were to, if you were to get into an accident, it's like things are just going to happen, right? Um, but that's what happens. Your mind is not working anymore in that way, rationally, okay? Then this leads you to, leads us to step four, which is the creation of memories, all right? So everything is recorded in our mind, especially the events that uh, were stressful or intense, intensely emotional for you. So if you had, let's for example, we'll go back to some of the fears. If you had an unpleasant experience in the past, right? That the fear of the past is showing up. So maybe you grew your business. Uh, maybe you had a business at one point and it was going great and it was going well, then maybe you lost everything, right? Or maybe you got, fired or let go from a job, right? Like that happened to me. I was let go from my last corporate job. It was a, such a blessing, but at the moment it was like, oh my gosh, right? Um, maybe you were, maybe, you know, you taught your first virtual class and technology went crazy, right? The slides weren't coming up or you went to go live on Facebook and it kept shutting you out. Um, all of these things, your body is remembering it right? Because you're feeling fearful, like, oh my gosh, you know, what if, what, what are people thinking, right? I remember the first time I really started getting online and I would do online trainings. I would lose my stuff when I would be in the middle of a training on Facebook live and it would just cut me off. And I would freak out because at the moment I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what are people thinking? They're going to think I'm so unpro un unprofessional. They're going to think I don't know what I'm doing. They're, all the fears started coming up, right? And so then your body remembers that. So then the next time you're presented with that same situation, you're presented with a new job opportunity or you're presented with the opportunity to build a, a new business again, it's coming back, right? Your, your body, your mind goes, oh, I remember this feeling. This is what she needs to be thinking. This is what needs to be happening in the body. And then these memories determine your action. And so by, allowing ourselves to stay in this state, what can happen is we can really miss out on some amazing opportunities, right? And it's nothing to beat ourselves up about. It's something for us to become aware of, right? Like, okay, how many opportunities have I missed out on because I let fear show up instead of my intuition, okay? 
So let's get into the, the real good part of this, of dismantling your fears. That's really what you want to know, right? Like, okay, I understand the fears. I understand how they show up. I understand what, what gates are defined in my chart and all this good stuff. But then how do I actually dismantle the fear? And so I want to walk you through um, the three steps of dismantling the fear, okay? First of all, the, before we get to the next slide, that I want you to know that the, the main key to escaping the fear loop is to detect your fear and experience it fully without reacting, right? It's in this witnessing that you can begin to dismantle the fear. And this can feel very uncomfortable, right? Because fear in our bodies does not feel good. We wanna cover up, we wanna go hide, or we wanna like explode into like all this, this action, right? So to be still and actually sit with your fear can feel uncomfortable, but it's the way, it's the way out of the fear. It's the way of understanding the fear, right? So two things to consider when you're stuck in the loop of fear is a fear is really sending you a message, something to pay attention to, because again, your spleen is, is an awareness center, right? It's one of the awareness centers in your body. And so again, um, fear is the seed of that awareness. So it's alerting you that something's not right. And two things are going to come up, right? I can't and I won't. So two things for you to consider is I can't and I won't, okay? So the first step then is to turn the can't into a won't. And I want you to think about that for a moment. How many times have you said like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do a Facebook Live. I can't ask for you know, this investment for my services or I can't figure out the next step, right? And it can be natural. Like I've done that before, right? I'm like, I can't do that. But I, an I can't is really covering as a cover up for other feelings. I can't um, can also become a part of your belief system and your identity, right? When you can say, well, you know, I can't do that. And you, then you believe, well, I'm not the kind of person who would do that or who can do that or who can show up and do this. And so that I can't be, becomes a belief that you keep repeating to yourselves. So to bring these feelings into awareness, there are two hypothetical questions that you can pose to yourself that I want to share with you. The first question is, is it true that I won't rather than I can't? Is it true that I won't rather than I can't? Just by simply asking yourself that question and you getting clear on, okay, is this a I can't or is it an I won't? The next question is, if I accept that I won't, what situations will be brought up and how do I feel about them? So if you have an I can't coming up around your business, right, and you, and, and you realize, okay, well, maybe it's an I won't. It's not really that I can't because I could if I wanted to, but maybe really it's an I won't. So if you can accept the I won't, what situations will be brought up and how do you feel about them? So if you won't, um, do a Facebook Live, for example. And I'm using that a lot because I know that that's a big fear for a lot of people is doing a Facebook Live. So how do you feel about the situations that can be brought up by not, by, by allowing yourself to be in the I won't phase? Are you okay with the fact that, um, that maybe your reach won't be as far, right? If you don't do video, I'm not saying that's the case, but this, hypothetically speaking, are you okay with being okay with just not doing them. So turn your can't into a won't. And a lot of the times when you do, when you, when you hear yourself saying, I won't, you can immediately go, oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just digging in my feet here, right? Cause really I can. Um, the next piece is, the next step is to envision. Envision, envision yourself doing the thing that you're fearful of and pay attention to the I can'ts that are coming up. So as you envision yourself doing the thing that you feel fearful of, all of the associated feelings will start to come up with it. So maybe it's embarrassment, maybe it's pride, maybe it's awkwardness, um, 
or maybe it's the effort of learning something new, or maybe it's the resistance of the time and energy that would be involved, right? So a few weeks ago, I had this intuitive nudge to do a, uh, an Instagram reel. So one of my um, intentions is to increase uh, my new uh, platform on Instagram that I created, right? And I saw everyone doing these reels and I thought, oh, these look like so much fun. I want to do these. That was my initial like, oh, yes, this is something I need to do. This looks like fun. And what a great way to bring some fun into my business. Immediately after that was, oh, but I got to sit and figure out how to do a reel. I've got to find some YouTube, you know, um, videos to watch, to figure out how to do this. How do I even put the words on the screen and make it match the music? Like all these things, my imagination was going crazy, right? But what I realized is that it, it, it and so then that made me a little nervous, made me a little anxious about the whole thing. But really, that wasn't true for me. Really, what it was is that I was resisting the effort and time that it would take for me to sit down and figure this out. Once I got that out of the way, the fun came back to it. Right. And so understanding that that's a part of the process when we're when we're embarking on something new and that fear comes up is that, OK, there's we're going to have to invest some time um, and effort in this. Am I willing to do that? Right. And then the last step is to surrender the feeling. Surrender the feeling. So once you become clear on the associated feelings, you can then choose to surrender them. Right. And I have several questions here that I want to share with you to help you move through this, this process of surrendering. And the first question is, Am I willing to continue to pay the price, right? So maybe you recognize in yourself that, okay, this is an I won't, and I won't do it because um, I'm feeling awkward about this or my pride's in the way. So then am I willing to continue to keep paying the price of not really stepping into my full potential? And so this requires like radical honesty with yourself, right? The next question is, would I be willing to let go of the fear and then name whatever the fear is? So would I be willing to let go of the fear of inadequacy? Would I be willing to let go of the fear of my past? Would I be willing to let go um, you know, of the fear of taking on respons more responsibility? Okay. The next question is, would I be willing to let go of the resist of, would I be willing to let go of resisting the effort that is required? Because a lot of the times we can have this dream and vision and we want that thing so bad, but inadvertently we're actually resisting that dream and vision that we have because we're resisting the effort that's required to, to bring that to fruition, right? And then the last question for this step is, would I be willing to let go of the vanity so that I can allow myself to be awkward as a learner? Would I be willing to let go of the vanity so that I can allow myself to be awkward as a learner? So when I did my first Instagram reel, you best believe I was very awkward. <laughs> It was awkward and it felt weird. And, and a part of me was like, oh my gosh, this is silly. Why am I even doing this? But can we give ourselves permission to just go there so that we can learn, so that we can evolve into our best selves, right? Um, and one of the tricks that I like to also share too is if it's your first time doing something, don't be afraid to share that. So when I did my first Instagram live, that's the first thing I said is, and I don't know why I was nervous. I'd done hundreds of Facebook lives, but for some reason going on Instagram, I was like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. But I simply stated it. And I said, you know what? This is my first Instagram live. I'm a little nervous, but here I am. And then I went on to share my message. The moment you can um, give words to your fear, you take the power away, right? You realize that, okay, it's out in the open. I don't need to hide it. Everyone knows. Now I'm free to move forward, right? So, at the end of the day, it, for us to step into the frequency of fearlessness, if you will, you got to be willing to step into the frequency of deep trust, right? Really trusting yourself and believing that, okay, I can move through this. 
I don't have to um, uh, be reactive, right? I don't have to repress this. I can move through this and I can operate um, at a higher frequency, you know, with this fear so that I can unleash my full potential and help those around me, right? So that is the end of my presentation around making your fears your superpower. And so I hope that you receive some amazing value around this. And it looks like we've got about maybe 15 minutes, Cindy, for some questions. And then um, I do have an invitation I'd love to share with you too. Yes, we didn't. Um, it was great. I wrote down all the questions. I don't know about everybody else, but... <laughs> Because just like everyone else, my conscious son is in the gate 48. So, hey, mm -hmm. um, okay. First question came uh, on uh, Zoom chat. I have the I have this gate 48 and this is me as you were discussing the gate 48. Mm -hmm. How does fear play out if you have an open spleen center, but many activated gates? Oh, I knew this question would come up. <laughs> so, all right. So if you have this, Here's how I like to look at it is, of course, when you have an, an undefined center, you're going to be taking in energies from the world. And so whatever gates that you have that are defined on your spleen, that's kind of the, the, the flavor, if you will, of what you're receiving, right? And so then that can express itself by you amplifying it, right? So you're amplifying this fear of, oh my gosh, I have, you know, whether it's fear of, of being inadequate or it's fear of, um, of, uh, of failing or, or, you know, or if it's fear of taking on responsibility, you're going to feel that in a, in a variable way, right? So it's not going to be something that's consistent for you, but you may notice that when you're in particular environments, that fear is kind of activating, you're like, ooh, right? Because you're taking on and you're, you're, you're pulling in receiving maybe somebody else's fear in the environment around you. So for you, it's very important to, again, question yourself and say, is this my fear or is it somebody else's fear? Right, so if you're feeling that gate 48 being activated is asking yourself that question, is this my fear or somebody else's, right? And when you can make that distinction, you get to let it go. But for you, you're gonna experience this, um, the flavor of these energies coming in through those gates in various ways. And sometimes it's gonna depend on the environment that you're in and the people that you're around. Excellent. Um, Kasen Kasenja, on Facebook says, if I have 50 only in design and not in my personality, what does that mean? 50 in your design. I'm going back because I don't have these memorized. <laughs> so let's see. So you have 50, read that again, 50 in her design. 50 in, 50 in her design. Okay. But not her personality. Correct. Okay. So if it's in your in your design, but not in your personality, this is gonna be more of an unconscious thing for you, right? So this may not be something that you're completely conscious of, but you asking that question, you've got some awareness around it, right? So this is gonna play out for you on an unconscious level, but the way that we bring things to our consciousness is to bring awareness to them. So this is why I love human design because it can bring to you the unconscious sides of you. And just by you being aware of that, right, is going to allow you to notice it when it shows up in the actions you're taking, in the way that you're speaking, and in the things that you're doing, okay? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, JLo on Zoom said, best way to help through gate 28 if we have the earth aligned there also. So the earth is activating the gate 28. Lynn says, do bingo, bingo. <laughs> So if you have the, the 28 is in your earth. Okay, let me look at something here really quick. Because earth is grounding. Is what grounds, hold on a second. Look, and this is me taking imperfect action, y'all, because again, I don't have all the planets memorized. <laughs> so earth is what is what's, what grounds you. So if you've got 28, right, at, which is the, the fear of death or purpose here, and it's in your earth, so it's grounding or balancing, then for you, you want to look at, the, I would look at the, the higher expression of, expression of this, and so for you, what can ground you then is looking at really being conscious of facing the ups and the downs that come up in your life, right, being able to ground yourself in knowing that, okay, 
there's going to be the ups, there's going to be the downs. And if I can face them and trust that whether it's up or down, that things are working for me, then you allow life to unfold, right? So a lot of us stepping into um, these energies too is, a, is trusting which leads you to allowance. When you can allow yourself to be in these spaces without making it mean something bad, right? But instead allow it, allowing it to kind of to ground you and, and help you to focus on, okay, what's great about this or what's not so great about this? Where do I, what do I need to release here? What do I need to surrender here? By doing that and accepting that totality of it all, you can then begin to relax and allow life to unfold in the way that is right for you. Well, thank you. Um, we had a, on Facebook, we had a fairly basic question. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if uh, this was, my 57 is only half filled in with red. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got what's called a hanging gate. And if it's red, then it's in your, your unconscious side, right? So when you have some, if you have a hanging gate um, off the, what, what's happening is that energy is reaching for the other side of that to complete that channel, right? It's reaching for whatever's on the other side of that to complete it. So for you, if you have it hanging, then what that means is, again, depending on who you're around, because depending on your environment, you can be around somebody who has the other side of that um, particular gate and it forms that channel, it forms a full line between there. And then you, you're experiencing that on a more, um, in a more amplified way. But if it's, again, if it's red, that means it's unconscious. So it's not something that you're totally aware of, so to speak. Um, so hanging gates are just, the way that I like to look at them is it's really going to play out based upon the environment and the people that you're around, right? The energy that you are around is going to, going to be what um, helps to fill the other side of that and brings that into full fruition, if that makes sense. And so it being the gate 57, they would experience it. So with it being the gate 57 then, and you have in the that fear of the future, then you're constantly always on the low side, constantly always looking for um, or afraid really of, of what could be happening in the future of your life, so to speak, or of your business, right? So then you're, you're afraid of what if this happens or what if that happens? On the high side of that, again, it's just choosing to trust that you're gonna know, right? Like you know intuitively, unconsciously, you know, um, what is right for you. And again, discerning between what is, what's fear and what is intuition, right? Your fear is going to be very loud, right? So this fear of the future is going to be very loud for you, right? But to step out of that is to then dismantle it, like we talked about um, earlier, and to really get in touch with your truth and your intuition. Okay. Um, next question was on Zoom. Uh, Regina, can you talk a little bit about how we may experience the gates differently if they're defined and connected with the life purpose versus soul purpose? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna be real honest with you on this one. I don't know if my ability to answer that question is gonna allow me to be in integrity by answering that. Um, well, what, they, what you can, I mean, that's, if you were to just answer part of it, what, does it make a difference if, because you did talk about one of the gates being in conscious earth and there's more questions down below about yeah. a gate expressing mm -hmm. through being activated by the earth. What if, what if a gate was activated by their conscious son? Would that make a difference? And how it's expressed? And how it's expressed or how, how they are felt, how the, how they, feel it in their body or how yeah. they're experiencing it. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that clarification. Yeah, for sure, like depending on, so yes. So if it's expressed, like for instance, in your in your son, right? Where your son is more about the expression of your personality and your purpose. Um, so if it's expressed there, then that's more of, okay, what you are here to express out into the world. So what was the gate that that was in, um, Cindy? What gate does she say? Did she say a gate? 
She did not say okay. agate, but let me see if she commented down below. Um, no, she did not. Okay. So, All right. well, let's, let's take an example of one of the people that um, we're talking about the gate 18, although okay. Lynn says her gate 18 is expressing in, um, is being activated by her design earth. So it's okay. kind of. So the unconscious earth. So if you were to use that, because earth is usually, the earths are usually are part of their incarnation cross, which would be right. bringing in the purpose and mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So if you have, let's say gate 18, then it's expressed unconsciously in your, in your earth, right? Then again, on that unconscious level, it is, I know like for, for me, I'll use me as an example. It is on the low vibe expression, right? It's that fear of authority. And so the way that for, when it's out of balance, how that feels is having this fear that those around you that are of authority are, they don't mean you good, right? They mean you harm. You can't trust them. I don't know if I can, you know, um, if I can do this. And so then there's a lot of judgment, lots of criticism, you know, that may, that may show up. So then in the grounding aspect of this, it is shifting into the higher vibe expression and saying, okay, well, let me just step back and I can see what I'm seeing, right? You're being grounded. You're grounded in the fact that you see when something needs to be corrected. You see when there's a pattern that is, that's corrupt, so to speak, and that it needs to have that correction. And so then part of your purpose in that space would be to bring about the communicate about that uh, correction, about that you know, the judgment that you see, but from a place of love, but only when you're asked um, to, to speak to that. So it's not something where we can go out and just, you know, see something um, and, and, uh, and say, well, this is what I see. You're not doing this right, not doing that right, right? Because then it's not received. It's from a space of people being open to receive what it is that you have to say so that you can offer that correction. Excellent. And Regina did comment. Um, her conscious son is in the gate 32. That. Okay. And that's the, um, the fear of failure. Okay. So you said her conscious son is in that? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So wonderful. I mean, so here's the thing that I loved it. There's gifts in all of these there's, there's so much, there's so many gifts in all of these. So if your gate 32 is in the sun, then your gift, right. Is, is here to help people see what to preserve and what to let go of, right? We all know that at some point in our life, we are holding on to things that really aren't supportive of us, that really aren't going to help us to uh, step into our highest potential, right? So you can choose to, number one, first raise your consciousness above fear. And then as doing that, help other people raise their consciousness above that fear so that they can see the long-term picture and better be able to um, create this balance between restraint and risk, knowing what they do need to preserve, what they need to keep and what the risks are <clears throat> that they can take to help them get to their next level. Excellent. And we're at the, almost at the top of the hour. Uh, did you want to, you said you had the, is one of the questions, do you work one-on-one -on -one with people for this? Are we going to segue into what you were going to? Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so I will, let me skip ahead here to the slides and share with you the invitation that I have for you. To answer that question, absolutely, I do work one-on-one -on -one with people to, um, to move through this. But what I have to offer you today is a self-study course. Um, that I've created called Break Through Your Limits. And it's all about courage, clarity, and confidence. And in this course, I'll walk you through, you know, overcoming your fear, your self-doubt, and the uncertainty that's standing in your way. Um, I'll walk you through how to release your limits and beliefs that are holding you back from playing bigger in your business. And then of course, to align you with the results that you desire to create in your business or life from a place of confidence, right? So we, I walk you through what this looks like. So I share with you like three steps today on how to dismantle a fear. And in this course, we really walk through what your fears are, then what beliefs are created through that and help you clear all of that so that you can move forward in your life and business from a place of courage, from a place of clarity and from a place of confidence. And I am offering this course at 60% off of what it typically is. 
um, with the coupon codes. If you see the coupon code on here, if you'll put that in, when you go to the link there, it will um, take off 60% off the course and you can move through this um, seven week self-study to help you. And then if you are wanting to connect on a more um, uh, personal level, you can, these is, this is where you can reach me on Instagram. I'm at self Success by Design. There's my Facebook, my email and my website. Um, that you can reach out to me at. And definitely, like, I know we're ending this, but if y'all have questions or anything that comes up, feel free to send me a message on either of those social media channels or via email. And I'd be happy to, um, to see how I can support you. Well, thank you. I did post the link for your course in the Fantastic. comments and I'm also posting. And I know that when we will post it also in the, description after Wonderful. but I have to thank you so much and Kristen saying you're amazing and oh. um, there was love this presentation so helpful I I thought that Natalie's was I think it's Natalie um thank you for this great presentation I appreciate your vocal clarity and flow repeating important points allowed me to take better notes which allowed the information to integrate at a higher level for me blessings thank you oh that's so beautiful I'm so appreciative of the love and I'm sending it right back to you all so I appreciate you being here and giving me your your energy <laughs> today well thank you so much thank you all right bye, bye everybody <laughs>